Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. For those of you that are new here, my name is Drew Sims, and for the past three years, I've been living out of my Jeep as a freelance photographer and filmmaker. And today I'm out in central Utah, gonna be giving you guys a quick tour of my home. Before we get into the tour, I wanna give a quick background on myself. I'm 26 years old, originally from Jacksonville, Florida. And back in summer of 2018, I graduated college, sold pretty much 90% of my belongings, in fact, everything else I owned in the Jeep and headed west. When I first started thinking about hitting the road and doing this type of lifestyle, I thought about selling the Jeep and getting a van. The big thing for me is I didn't want to sacrifice four wheel drive. And if you've ever done any research on a van, a four x four van is absurdly expensive. So for me, the better option was to keep the Jeep and work with what I have. One, because it's been able to get me to a lot of places that a typical van couldn't get to, including this spot today. I have a higher clearance vehicle than most vans. And two, I think having such a small space has kind of forced me to be a lot more minimalistic than I would have been with a van, as well as spending more time outside than I do inside of the Jeep, obviously, because it's such a small space. Once I made that decision to stick with the Jeep, I gutted the inside, took out the seats, the carpet, pretty much everything, retired the soft top, and then put about 250 plus hours into redesigning the interior and the exterior to make it what it is today, which is my home. For the most part, everything you see in this video is gonna be linked down below in the description in case you guys wanna get a little more info on it or check it out for yourself. I'm also excited to announce that I recently came out with some merchandise, t-shirts, as well as stickers. I'm getting some requests over the last couple of months and I finally got the designs done and the shirts out. It comes in short sleeve and long sleeve in black, white, gray, and army green. And also comes with a version with just the front logo and no Jeep on the back. Really happy how the stickers came out as well. And big shout out to the Van Life Design for helping me out with those. I'll link his info down in the description as well. But that's enough for this intro. We'll go ahead and jump into the actual tour. So the Jeep is a 2013 four-door Wrangler Sport Unlimited. When I left Florida, it had about 72,000 miles on it. And now I just hit 145,000 the other day. So I definitely put a ton of miles on this thing over the last three years. Luckily, no major issues, knock on wood. With regular oil changes and regular service, this thing's held up great. One thing to mention that I did the first year and a half on the road with the base of the Jeep completely stock. So I had 31s, no lift, no winch, no bumper. The only thing that was modified in the exterior was the roof, the roof rack, and the rooftop tent. And I mentioned that because I think it's super important if you're getting into overlanding or interested in living on the road, that it's not super important to have big tires or a lift or a winch or you know, a front bumper and all these crazy upgrades. For me, I think it's more important to have a decent place to sleep inside of the vehicle as well as tent if you're gonna go that route. And also have a decent kitchen set up, eating on the road. If you're gonna eat fast food all the time, you're not gonna last very long. If you're gonna eat peanut butter sandwiches every day, I think you're gonna get burned out pretty quickly. So everything you see on the Jeep now has been a process over the last three years. And now through sponsorships and brand partnerships as well as me just buying a lot of the gear on my own, I've upgraded it to what it is today. So the Jeep sitting on a two inch heavy load old man emu lift. For this was probably the best option for me. My Jeep is super maxed out on weight. Not sure how much it weighs, you guys always ask. And I'm not even sure where to get it weighed. So if you guys know, show that in the comments and I'll hopefully get this thing weighed over the next month or two. It says it's a two inch lift. I think when we put it on, it was closer to three. And now it sits at around two and a half, which I think looks perfect with the 33 inch tires. These are Toyo open country all-terrain tires. I know a lot of people run 35s on their Jeep and I think a 35 definitely looks better. But for me, I'm not someone who wants the four inch lift or 37 inch tires. I wanna be a little more versatile and be able to do long-term travel on the highway and save whatever little gas mileage I have left. So the all-terrain and the 33s just made a little more sense for me personally. Also, just up on the front two tires, you've got Rugged Ridge mud flaps. I got the rear ones as well, but just didn't really like how they looked and mostly just wanted them for the front so my driver door wouldn't get sprayed with mud constantly and also helps with rocks coming up against the door. Up front, we've got an upgraded aluminum bumper, which I love. I think it looks great. Gives the whole front like a much meaner look. Big fan of this. Also got D-rings down here. These are a little more heavy duty rings that I found on Amazon. Um, they're a little more expensive than the normal ones you get, but these actually don't move around as much and they're a little more heavy duty looking, which I like. Upgraded to LED headlights here, as well as LED fog lights, which was an upgrade that I did not know I needed. I did the first year on the road with the basic stock Jeep lights, which were like those yellow lights. And these are so much better. So if there's one upgrade I would do exteriorly or definitely be get a decent set of LED headlights. Behind the grill here, I've got this kind of mesh material I found on Amazon. It just cleans up the front a lot. And my radiator was looking pretty chipped up and had bugs all in it. And I couldn't really get it clean. So 
this just makes the whole front of the Jeep look a lot cleaner and a lot nicer. And then finally, you've got the Quadratec Q Performance Stealth Winch. Unfortunately, I would not recommend this winch. It actually snapped on me about two and a half months ago while I was winter camping. I was up near the Tetons, pretty far down a forest service road. And if you guys have watched any of my winter camping videos, you know I like to get out there and get in pretty deep snow by myself. So I got stuck in about a foot and a half of snow, tried to winch out, the winch snapped on me. The Jeep actually turned sideways on the trail and almost got into a really bad situation, falling into a ditch of like six feet of snow. So unfortunately, I would not recommend the Quadratech winch. They usually make great products, but this one uh, really let me down and almost cost me a couple grand to get towed out of there. So I'm in the market for a new winch. If you guys have any recommendations for brands that you like or reliable brands that you've been using, definitely comment down below. On the back, you've got a four gallon Rotopax, an ax and a shovel, and that's all mounted directly to the spare tire. It also is locked in uh, with a bike lock just so nobody can take off the gas tank. Um, or the shovel or anything. This is all locked in directly to the spare. The spare is actually a full size 33 inch tire. I didn't want to be stuck with a flat out somewhere like this and have to make it back this pretty gnarly dirt road with a donut on. So going with the full 33 inch spare uh, was the best option for me. With all this extra weight on the back, I upgraded to the TerraFlex HD hinge carrier. This is just kind of peace of mind for me because I do have a good amount of weight on this back tire carrier and I do stand on this quite a bit to get up to the Pelican case. So having this little upgrade, um, like I said, just gives me a little bit of peace of mind. Up top, we've got a four gallon solar shower. I made this myself just out of ABS pipe. REI does a great video, which I pretty much followed and made my own little modifications, um, but it shows you how to build this. It cost me like 60, 70 bucks, which is ridiculously cheap. If you look online to buy them, they're like $400, which I think is absurd. And to pressurize it, I just have a little 12 volt air compressor that I hook up up front. And that runs back to here, pressurizes, and then the shower is on. It says it's a solar shower. I'd put solar in heavy quotes because it really doesn't get that warm unless it's like 90 degrees out. I'll usually boil a pot of water and top it off, close it up, and then the whole thing warms up nicely. The shower is just mounted with L brackets from Home Depot and these little mounts from Lowe's. I don't think Home Depot sells them, and I'm not sure what the name of them are, but they are linked below for you guys to check out. They work great with the Rhino Rack. They're super cheap alternative to trying to get the proprietary uh, Rhino Rack gear, which is, I think, in my opinion, pretty overpriced. Behind the shower, you've got a Pelican 90 case. I can't think of the specific name, but it's one of the newer models they came out with. It's a pretty solid case. The main reason I went with it is because it fit nicely right behind the rooftop tent and the shower. It's the only one, honestly, that fit up there. It's pretty narrow, but also gives you a good amount of height, so you fit a lot of stuff up there. Most of the gear I keep up there is camping gear and stuff I don't use on a regular basis. It also scratches pretty easily considering how expensive it is and the mounts for it cost, I think $250, which is almost as much as the case. So I went to Home Depot, I got L brackets, I got the little mounts from Lowe's and got it up there. And I also have it just tied here uh, to the shower as well as an extra precaution. On the side, we've got these uh, little steps that I just got off Amazon as well. These have been great just to be able to get up to the roof and get to the tent if I need to or get to the Pelican. I can stand on here and the tire to get to the Pelican and then stand on both of these to get up to the actual tent. Another cool cheap little upgrade that I did is just the antenna. Really nothing crazy and honestly no utility reason behind it other than the fact that it looks cool. I was just scrolling Amazon seeing what I could find uh, to try to upgrade the Jeep a little more and this popped up and definitely like how it looks more than uh, the large stock antenna. And I do think it helps if you're driving down pretty tight and narrow uh, dirt roads or back roads with a lot of overhang. Instead of hitting the antenna, this one's so small that it stays out of the way, which is a nice cheap little upgrade. And now to probably the piece that was the most essential for me to be able to live out of this thing for the past three years, but also the one I have the biggest love-hate relationship with, and that's gonna be this hardtop. Uh, this is Smitty Built Safari hardtop. It's got four windows, uh, two on each side, these skylight windows. And as you can see, it's a curved design, so it's got an extra six inches of interior space, which is great. And one of the reasons I've been able to sleep in there, have extra storage up top, makes the Jeep feel much more open and you get this light coming through, which is awesome. A big downside, this thing is terribly made. The windows I've had to reseal, you can kind of see they're all gunked up. I've had to reseal them, I'd say six or seven times on the road. The lift gate, I popped it open one time, completely fell off. Luckily I caught it so it didn't shatter. And then the interior locks up front are just super flimsy and, and very cheaply made in my opinion. 
I've reached out to Smitty Built um, probably five or six times and never even got a response and then found out that they actually discontinued this rooftop. But I think they've had a lot of issues with it, unfortunately. Hopefully in the future they have a better alternative for this type of rooftop. Some things I do like about it though, like I mentioned the skylight windows, but a big bonus and a big plus is that it has mounts already built in for a roof rack. So this is the Rhino Rack Maximus 3. I wanted this rack just because it was uh, super well sized and it fit accordingly with the Smitty built hardtop. The pre-drilled holes, I did have to widen uh, the steel holes a little bit on the Rhino Rack mounts, but it fit really nicely. And I didn't have to do any drilling into the Jeep or into this hardtop itself, which was nice. Up front here, we've got a Rhino Rack wind deflector. Uh, I've had this for the full three years on the road. Not really sure if it does anything because the Jeep is still ridiculously loud. Um, but at this point, it's just kind of all up in my head and it looks cool, so it stays up there. Uh, with the curved roof and with this full-size Rhino Rack, the front used to wobble up and down quite a bit because the mounts are here and then in the very back. So there really wasn't a ton of support up here. So I ended up cutting yoga blocks at an angle, putting them up on the roof and spray painting them black. So you don't really see them, uh, but they give a ton more support up front, especially when you're sleeping up in the tent, you're not bending uh, the roof rack at all and putting any bad pressure on the mounts in the back there. Last on the exterior, you've got the iCamper SkyCamp Mini and then the Ezeon Batwing 270 awning. I'll go ahead and get those undone and then talk a little bit more about both. So I actually had an awning for the first year on the road. I literally probably used it twice just because it was such a pain to put up on my own. You always had to tie it down, it was super flimsy and if there was any type of wind, I wouldn't even bother putting it up. This has been really awesome though. It's completely self-supporting. I actually picked it up in Salt Lake City about three weeks ago from a company called Equipped One. They're a great overlanding outfitter with a lot of gear that you don't see in the States from a lot of South African based companies. But I was able to actually go to the shop and pick it up in Salt Lake City just a few days after messaging them on Instagram. So I've been loving it so far. The self-supporting aspect of it is great. I do put these pulls up every time I use it though, just cause it adds a little bit of height to it. And if there's any bit of wind, having the pulls down and staked sometimes, depending on how heavy the wind is, makes the world a difference. Another great feature with this specific model is that it puts an emphasis on covering the back of the Jeep a lot. So I've got my full kitchen set up here and all my gear back here. And this awning covers all of it, which is great. If you saw any of my winter camping videos, you know, I was using a tarp for a while or just being in the snow while trying to cook. So this awning is gonna be a huge game changer, especially for the summer. I've been in Utah the past couple of weeks and it's been getting to 90 sometimes during the day. So having this awning has been great in case I wanna pull over to make lunch really quick or if I'm waiting for sunset and it's hot out, I can pop this up really quick and it's super easy to put back. So very excited to use this a lot more this upcoming summer. So this is the iCamper SkyCamp Mini. I did a full length review on this already and I'll link that somewhere in the video or down below in the description if you want some more detail on it and an in-depth review. But a couple of key features, like you guys just saw, it literally takes a minute to set up. The first year on the road, I had a soft shell traditional rooftop tent, which probably took 10 to 15 minutes to set up. Which doesn't seem like a big deal, but if it's cold out, if you're getting to camp late, or if you're waking up for sunrise, trying to deal with those zippers and 10 to 15 minutes on top of the roof, trying to get that tent undone is a real pain. So the ease of use of this thing is awesome and definitely one of the main reasons to invest in an eye camper. I would say it's not as comfortable as my old tent. I think my old tent had a three inch mattress. This is a one and a half. It's still plenty comfortable and there's a ton of space up there. It also has a cool map design in the back, which was a nice little touch. Hard shell is also great because if it's windy out, I can actually position the hard shell to take the blunt force of the wind so it quiets it down a ton. It's definitely still decently loud up there if it's windy. But versus my old tent, this is so much quieter. I've also mounted a solar panel to the top of this. It's a 100 watt panel that runs internally to the Jeep to a Jackery 1000. I don't run a dual battery system. I know a lot of overlanders and a lot of people that live on the road have that dual setup. 
I have a Odyssey deep cycle battery and that's worked out great for me. The fridge runs off of that. I've had no issues with it with the Jeep. And the 1000 watt battery with this 100 watt panel is more than enough to charge my computer, my camera gear, my drone, everything else I need to charge up. I've had no issue with power, even if I'm spending time up in the snow like I was this past winter and not having a lot of sunlight, 1000 watts was still more than enough for me. Probably the most asked question I get while living on the road is how do I find camp spots like the one I'm at right now? I do 90% of my camping on public land and national forest. I very rarely stay in national parks and I'll sometimes stay in a state park if I wanna shower or just have a campground that's closer to the spot that I wanna be at. An awesome resource I've been using the past couple of months, specifically for my winter camping videos and now for this summer out in the desert, is an app called The Dirt. Right now, The Dirt's offering three months completely free of their premium membership. A couple of the key features I've personally been enjoying has been the ability to find campgrounds without service. So right now I have no service, my phone's offline, but I have this area downloaded and I'm actually able to scope out sites on The Dirt app. The other feature I've been using recently just the past couple of weeks has been the trip planner. I'm trying to figure out where I'm going for summer, what my route is, and having the trip planner, you can actually put in your traveling from Salt Lake City to Portland over seven days. It'll show where you can camp, suggestions of things to do, what campsites are available. And if you wanna camp in national parks and state parks, you can actually book directly through the app, which is an awesome feature. So definitely hit the link below in the description to check out the dirt. Use code Drew90 to get those three months for free. This is literally the best three months coming up to have this premium version. You can book your summer campgrounds, you can use the route planner, you can find spots like I'm at right now, and it's literally free. So go check it out guys, use code Drew90, and it's linked below in the description. So everything on the inside I built out myself. It took me probably two weeks and it's all just built out of plywood. I really knew nothing about carpentry when I was doing all this, so it probably took a lot longer than it should have. Fortunately, I don't have any videos of me building it out, but I do have some photos that I'll throw in for reference. But basically, everything is built off of two platforms. There are two by fours bolted directly to the Jeep where the rear seats used to be, and then two by fours bolted directly to the Jeep where the trunk is. On that, there are half inch pieces of plywood bolted to the two by fours, and then everything is built off of that. I went that route just so everything was secured to the Jeep. I ended up using half inch plywood. I was gonna go quarter inch to save a little bit of weight, but the half inch just seemed like a better idea for the base parts just to make sure it was sturdy. It's been almost three years on the road. Only thing I've had to replace in this are the drawer slides on the kitchen twice, but other than that, everything's held up really great. I do a ton of off-roading. I beat the heck out of this thing and really impressed that all this wood and the build itself has held up for three years. We'll go ahead and first start off on the right side here. You've got a five gallon water tank. I mostly just use this for washing my hands, face, doing dishes. I don't usually drink out of it. I've got three gallon jugs as well as probably a gallon of water between a couple hydro flasks. I do drink out of this if I need to, if I'm low on water. It basically works the same as the shower, but instead of a 12 volt air compressor, it just works off a bike pump. This plugs in and then you've got pressurized water. This is great for doing dishes, which doing dishes is literally the worst part about living on the road. So having pressurized water makes it a little easier instead of having to take a gallon jug and pour it over and do your dishes. This just is a little more convenient. Next to that, you've got the kitchen pantry. This isn't on drawer slides, it's just on two pieces of wood and the back of it, just rest up against the bed so it doesn't slide out. I've got a lock up front, but this thing weighs so much that it really never moves around. On the top level here, I've got three pull out drawers. These all slide too, so you can access stuff underneath without having to pull them out fully. For the most part, this is just all food. I've got some extra propane in here, pots, pan, dishes, olive oil. And this is, like I said, pretty much just the kitchen pantry. Next to that is the kitchen. This is a three drawer pullout system. I've seen these online that you can buy, but they're pretty pricey. So I'm just building one myself, kind of taking designs that I've seen before and then adding a little bit of my own. And then to support it underneath, I've just got this pull, just gives it a little extra stability. These two sections are in drawer slides while this third just pops out. You can see it pushes up against the top of this so it stays in place. On the back section, this is just a cutting board I found aligned that fit the width of this, and then I cut it to size. This is great to have so I can food prep here without having to bring out a cutting board. For cooking, I've got a Coleman two burner stove. If you guys have watched any of my winter camping videos, you know I love to cook. You know, I can cook pretty much anything on this thing. 
as well as I cook over a fire sometimes too. And then in the back underneath, I've got silverware and I also have a little spice drawer in the back as well. Before we move on from the kitchen setup, I wanna talk about my coffee setup. I get questions about that all the time. So I thought I'd show you what I use. I've just got a little mug here. I also have a hydro flask mug that I use quite a bit. I've got a pour over from a company called Huckberry. I also recently, I uh, just got hooked up with a coffee grinder from them. So this is a Vissel coffee grinder, coffee beans. And then this is a travel AeroPress. I probably use this more than I do the pour over. And this is great if you're trying to do a solid cup of coffee while you're backcountry camping or anything like that. I also use Four Sigmatic quite a bit. This is actually mushroom coffee. This isn't a plug, I'm not sponsored by these guys, but if I drink coffee too much during the week, I feel like I get jittery and just kind of out of it. So I like to switch it up uh, with mushroom coffee. And this is actually an instant pack of coffee, which I know a lot of people are gonna be like, instant coffee is disgusting. Well, this stuff's actually pretty good and this is nice for camping or if I just want a quick cup of coffee in the morning that happen to do this whole setup, I can just use the instant coffee. And for the coffee, I just use a jet boil. Like I said, I cook pretty much everything off of this or over a fire. Um, but I do use the jet boil uh, for coffee, for instant meals while I'm backcountry camping, um, just if I need to heat up water quickly without wanting to set up the whole kitchen. And then one more honorable mention, again, not sponsored, not a plug, uh, but Trader Joe's, everything with the bagel seasoning. If you don't have this, you guys are doing it wrong. This is so good, not a plug, not sponsored, maybe one day. And then next in the back here, I've got just a container uh, for all my socks and underwear, extra pants, and some base layer stuff. And below that is a Dometic 28 quart fridge. It runs directly off the 12 volt of the Jeep, so it runs off the battery. What's nice is it'll shut itself off if it drains the battery too much, but it only runs a couple times a day. Similar to a nice cooler, it keeps most of the cold in so it doesn't have to run consistently. I think this has definitely been up there with one of the main reasons I've been on the road so long. Having a fridge versus a cooler is definitely the way to go in my opinion. If you're gonna be doing a few weeks on the road, I think you can get away with a cooler, but if you're gonna do months or definitely a year on the road, I think investing in a pretty solid fridge is definitely worth it. It holds a pretty good amount. I can usually do around five days on the road without going to a grocery store. The longest I've gone, I think is 10 days when I was up in Canada. Uh, but by the end of that, I was eating Idaho instant mashed potatoes for pretty much every meal. Uh, which don't get me wrong, those are like the greatest thing invented for camping, but eating them for breakfast, lunch, and dinner was a little rough. Then on the back side here, I'm not gonna bring all this out, this is just gear, uh, but I got a backcountry bag, a day pack, a couple water bottles, and then up on the side against the window are those three water jugs uh, for drinking water. Up top here, I've got a little LED light bar. This thing is great for cooking at night. It used to be hooked up directly to the Jeep, uh, but that one broke and I got a new one now that hooks up to the Jackery. Can't really decide which one I like better. The Jackery one's nice because it won't die on me, but I have to plug it in every time I want to use it. And the other one was nice because every time I opened the lift gate, it would turn on. But after about 30 minutes, the light would shut off. So probably do the next couple of weeks with this one. And then if I want to, I'll switch back to the old one that I had. And then lastly, in the back here that you guys can see is the bed. This is just my old college uh, foam mattress topper. I cut it in half and stacked them. I think it's around three to four inches. Um, really comfortable. I honestly really enjoy sleeping in here. I think it's funny if I ever roll up to someone's house, uh, one of my buddies or anything, they ask if I want to sleep on the couch. More often than not, I'd rather sleep in the Jeep because it's a little more comfortable. I think it's a really awesome feature to be able to sleep inside of your vehicle. I know a lot of people live on the road with just a rooftop tent. I think that'd be really difficult for a couple of reasons. One, if it's raining out, if it's super windy, being able to just hop in the back of the Jeep is so nice versus trying to set up the tent. And obviously you can't set up your tent in the middle of a parking lot or a neighborhood or something like that. So being able to stealth camp in this thing is awesome. I'm about 6'3 and I fit in here really nicely. And with the fold out up front that I'll show you, the entire bed is about 74 inches. So to sleep in the Jeep, I go ahead and pull this front seat forward as far as I can. And then there is a little piece of wood on a hinge that folds over. And then I've got an extra pillow that goes here and it makes it, uh, like I mentioned, about 74 inches from front to back and my feet sit right here. So it's definitely a bit of a tight fit sleeping in here. It does have an extra six inches of space on the inside, which makes a huge difference. So when I sleep, I actually crawl from the front to the back of the Jeep. And the only reason I sleep with my head down here and not up there is because my feet need to hang off a little bit up front. I would say it's probably like a 60-40 split, 60 me sleeping in the Jeep and 40 in the tent. Sleeping in the Jeep is just so much more convenient, especially if I'm getting up for sunrise or getting to camp late 
or if it's windy at all or raining at all, I definitely would rather sleep in the Jeep. It's much quieter, uh, much warmer, and definitely more comfortable. Down below underneath this is just a little bit of camping equipment, um, some chargers for all my camera gear, and then I've got the Jackery 1000. So this hooks up directly from here, which runs up the Jeep to the solar panel up top. This just hooks in. I know a lot of people do a whole solar setup where they have an inverter and all that crazy stuff. Uh, for me, this is just much more convenient. I don't need um, a couple thousand watts. A thousand watt is more than enough for me. Um, and I've been loving the Jackery so far. I've got storage kind of everywhere throughout the Jeep, um, stuffed up on the windows between the roll bar and as well as just kind of everywhere I can find space, I've got something. On the side here, I've got my sleeping bag. I usually have two bags. Uh, one's a zero degree and this one's a 20 degree bag, but because winter is over and it's pretty much summertime, I left my zero degree bag back in Salt Lake. So now I'm just running with this. And then finally up top here, this is probably one of my favorite features of the Jeep and something I just recently did. This has always been camera storage, but as of recently, I redesigned the whole drawer and now have actual foam blocks throughout the whole thing. And each camera, each battery, everything has a specific place to go, which has been awesome. I also have a locking system on this. This just locks it into place so it won't move around while it's driving. But this I can actually lock up. And I also run a pretty thick uh, bike lock through the base of the Jeep. And that runs through the drawer, through the handle, through the Jackery and connects back to the base of the Jeep. So just a little bit of peace of mind while I'm backcountry camping or even just on a daily hike that everything is locked up and secure. And out front here, I've got this little accessory, super cheap, but it pops in uh, the little handle here and I can store gear in there, like filters and stuff like that while I'm driving, which is nice. Also have a phone holder up top here. Then I've got string lights that run around the top of the Jeep. So if I'm sleeping in here, I've got a little bit of lighting. And I just recently installed these little touch lights, which have been nice if I'm in here at night eating or just reading or something like that without having to have uh, the keys in the Jeep, I can still have some lighting. On the driver's seat, you've got this butt pillow and I usually get made fun of for driving with this, but it makes the world a difference. I spend a lot of time in this driver's seat and if you have ever driven in a Jeep before, you know it's not the most comfortable seating. So having this really helps out, makes my back feel a ton better. And then lastly up front, something that I recently installed, and I did this because kind of the whole COVID situation, I used to do a lot of my work in coffee shops and libraries, but because of COVID, a lot of that is still shut down out West. So I wanted to have a little desk to work in the Jeep with, and I designed this. Um, just little clamps off of Amazon, some L brackets, and then this is a cutting board that I drilled through, and it actually hooks on and clamps on right to this little handle. And then you lock it into place with the clamps then you got yourself a little desk in the jeep this is nice too it supports the laptop really well you can type on it still and press down and it won't fall the placement's nice because i can actually charge the laptop from the jackery behind me i can put my hard drives up top on the dash here again i can type on it it's not going anywhere along with this interior desk i also just added an exterior one because of the awning now i can do some work outside so i'll go ahead and show you that really quick So this has been a nice little upgrade. I've got a chair that just sits here and I'm pretty level with the desk and my feet can go underneath and go in between the bar so I'm not hitting any of the legs. It's pretty much just up in between the fender and the license plate. It just fits nicely. I think this is a quarter inch piece of wood. I wanted an outdoor desk because I got the awning and I knew I'd want to be working outdoors more this summer. On top, I have this uh, material from Home Depot that is used as drawer liner and toolboxes. So it's kind of a soft material and it'll help the computer stay still and not slide around in the wood. Nice little addition to the Jeep and very excited to have this in the awning to be able to do a little more editing outside this summer. And then pretty much the last big feature of the interior of the Jeep is gonna be the closet. I've gotten comments before being like, do I really need a closet? Am I that worried about my clothes being wrinkled? Uh, for me, that's not it at all. Having the organization of all your shirts and jackets being hung up, having all my pants organized in this little organizer from Walmart, and then my boots and another pair of shoes are in the closet as well. I've got hats up on hangers here, and it's just nice to have everything organized and in one spot. I've also got a motion sensored light on top of the closet as well as in the camera drawer. That's nice at night. I don't have to have a headlamp on to come and get something from this. I can just pop out, wave my hand, and that'll turn on. Uh, behind the closet, I've got a trash can, um, which is super convenient while I'm driving. I can just turn around and throw trash in there. 
And last little noteworthy thing to mention here, I do have a space heater. It's a Mr. Buddy space heater, and I use that when I sleep in the rooftop tent. A lot of people ask me if I'm worried about the fumes from that. I only run it 10 minutes before I go to bed and 10 minutes when I wake up. And if I do run it for longer periods of time, I make sure I vent the tent a little bit just in case. I did a ton of snow camping this past winter, and this thing definitely came in clutch. All right, guys, that pretty much wraps up this vlog. You guys have seen my kitchen, my closet, my bedroom, my home office, the shower, the rooftop tent, all that good stuff. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you aren't already, make sure to subscribe. If you guys want to follow along with some more up-to-date road life stuff, follow me on Instagram at drew.sims. Also, make sure to check out The Dirt. Like I mentioned, they're giving away three months completely free of their premium membership when you use the code DREW90. In my opinion, summer camping is by far the best out of any time of the year. So this is the perfect three months to have this app for. And like I said, it's completely free. So you guys might as well try it. If you guys are interested, the shirts are also linked down below in the description. Really excited. It was a fun time designing these. So I hope you guys enjoy those. And lastly, I'm excited to announce that I partnered up with a travel company to hopefully be doing a workshop come 2022, maybe somewhere like New Zealand or Iceland, or maybe just even in the States. If that's something you're interested in, there's a short survey down below that'll let me know how much photography based you'd want the workshop to be or how much you just want to enjoy the trip and also location wise. If you guys have any questions for me, I'll try to answer as many comments as I can down below, but I'll also be doing a Q and A in a couple of weeks to give a little more insight on road life and how the last three years on the road has been. But that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.